You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. And thank you for joining us this morning. He was a political giant in the city of Jacksonville, and he spent the vast majority of his life in public service known to love his hometown. Tommy Hazuri served in four different state and local elected offices over five decades. I'm Kent Justice. Thank you for joining us for this week in Jacksonville this morning. Tommy Hazuri passed away Saturday just a few weeks after entering uh, hospice care at home. He had a lung transplant surgery a little more than a year ago. Joining us now, my colleagues Tom Wills and Jim Piggott here in studio and with us remotely, City Council members Brenda Priestley Jackson and Matt Carlucci. And I appreciate I appreciate uh, all of you being here. I know there's a lot we could talk about. Let's just maybe start uh, broadly. In a sentence, Brenda Priestley Jackson, in a sentence, what should people remember about Tommy Hazuri? Uh, Tommy is a true Jacksonville son, someone who dedicated his life to our neighbors and um, our city and state, and a model husband and father, so a true Jacksonville son. If you think about his ethno-racial diversity, which he did not overly lift up, and you think about his willingness to serve in various roles from the state legislature to mayor to city council and school board, he's a true Jacksonville son that improved our quality of life. How about that? Matt Carlucci, I know you and I visited yesterday a little bit about uh, your remembrances of Tommy Hazuri. In a sentence, what do you think people should remember about the former mayor, former city councilman, former school board member? Heart. Tommy had a heart. And he had a heart for so many of our community that perhaps didn't feel they had a voice, but he always took their voice, he had a heart like a magnet towards people that needed help and felt perhaps their voices was, was unheard. Um, so you asked me one word, I would have to say heart, that, that would be mine. Wow, okay, thank you. Uh, Tom Wills, Jim Piggott, I wanna hear your recollections. What's the one thing that uh, people should remember about Tom in Missouri, Tom? Kent. He made, as mayor, he made two of the largest contributions in the city's history to the quality of life here in Jacksonville. He got rid of tolls, he led the charge, and he cleaned up the odors in the air that were all pervasive. Yeah. A, a huge accomplishment. And I can, I can take a lot more than a sentence, sure. but I want to hear what Jim says. <laughs> yeah, Jim. I, I just think he was so outgoing. He was so friendly. He just would... He would get on target with a topic and, and was relentless with that. He saw what issues were important to people and he would want to talk about it. He would want to change that. As Tom had mentioned, the odor, uh, tolls, but recently with JEA and also um, like the human rights ordinance, right, that's different things point. like that. Tommy was on top of that. Yeah. So uh, let me bring our, our city council members back into this. Uh, Matt Carlucci, we just talked about tolls and uh, that that smell, that odor that Jacksonville Remember, used Matt, to have. Remember, Matt, you'd fly into town, and the, before the plane would land, <laughs> in in the cabin, you would smell that sickly sweet smell from the paper mills. Come on. Well, I remember that very well because I had just been elected to the city council, and um, and those are two huge issues that were history making in Jacksonville, and I felt proud to be a part of it. Uh, Tommy was driving that again from his heart uh, of love for uh, Jacksonville. He went on and did a, um, a news conference in the front of one of these paper mills or one of the mills, chemical mills, that was causing so much odor. And they came out and said he was trespassing onto their property. He says, well, your odors are trespassing <laughs> onto our neighbors. And uh, But I want to say one thing, if I can, very quickly. Uh, I can tell you that this family, uh, their hearts are so warmed and overwhelmed by all the love that this community has shown them. And, uh, and I have to tell you this, this is most important. Uh, my heart breaks for his wife, Carol. Uh, they had a love and devotion to one another that made their marriage very special. And he could have never been uh, the person he was without her. And that's, I think about her and, and his immediate family, but they are so overwhelmed by the love of this community, by people they don't even know. And um, I just wanted to share that because they wanted that share. And so uh, thank you for allowing me to mention that. Yeah. 
of, of course. And Brenda Priestley Jackson, I know when we mentioned uh, the the opportunity today to talk about Tommy Hazura, you said he was uh, a colleague a couple of different times, city council and school board with you, right? Yes, he was. Um, I joined the school board in 2002, and Tommy came on in 2004. And we served together from 2004 until 2010 when I went off and resumed service on the city council in 19. And what's unique about that for the school board was we had prior to Tommy, uh, Jimmy Johnson was the school board member, was the lone male. And then Tommy came on for a window of time and was the lone male on the school board. But we affectionately dubbed ourselves his school board babes. And we, we got an opportunity to actually go visit Carol and Tommy two weeks ago, um, along with our spouses. And so um, we found kindred spirits in both those roles. I, I laughed all the time. There are two funny stories I have to share about Tommy. One is I'm a little better than six feet tall. Tommy's probably about five, eight, five, eight and a half. And whenever we would be talking, he had this preoccupation with thinking I was looking at his hairpiece. A, I didn't even know he had a hairpiece at that time because I wasn't around. And, and so my running joke with him was, I am just taller than you and I am looking at you. I'm not looking down on your hairpiece. <laughs> and, and, and then the second thing was um, he had a way of respecting diverse opinions and making certain we were all a part of the fabric. And he was more than willing to let whoever was best suited to do that address it. And I want everybody to think back to the RNC. And Matt can recall this. We received the legislation for the RNC coming to Jacksonville on a Thursday afternoon. It was over 100 and maybe 20 pages. I had it sitting out with a glass of wine. Tommy called me and said, what are you doing? Five o'clock, I said, I'm reading this legislation for the 10 o'clock meeting we had that Friday. And Tommy shared with me, well, you don't need to worry about it. It's not coming. And I said, what do you mean it's not coming? He said that they're not going to come. And he shared some. I said, well, we're still having the meeting. And he said, well, as your rules chair, what do, you, what do you think? I think I think you need to have it. I said, I think you need to have the meeting and you need to put a closure on the RNC so it could not come back. And if you recall, Matt, we had that meeting. Um, we took action to, to, um, on the legislation not to advance it. And it was that night that Tommy went in for his lung transplant, oh, my which night. meant that if he had not done that that day, we would have had an acting council president, an acting you know, vice president and myself, that might have taken a different action. And so I joked and told him, I said, you got everything that needed to be done, done before you went to get your lung transplant. He said, that's right, because he cared just that much. He cared just that much. Yeah, wow. Well. I appreciate those stories. We're going to spend some time with some more stories as we go on. I do want to read you a statement from Mayor Lenny Curry that he sent out sharing this message on Twitter Saturday afternoon, along with sharing some photos of Tommy Hazuri. He said, our city mourns the loss of a true Jacksonville champion. Tommy, I will always value your friendship, leadership, and your passion for our community. You will be dearly missed. Godspeed, my friend. My deepest sympathy and prayers are with your family. Um, I think there's a, a great a connection that we want to make between uh, how Tommy uh, uh, Tazuri dealt with opposition. I want to talk about that when we come back. So I ask you to stay with us. Our panel is with us, and I hope you will be with us, too, as we pay tribute this morning to Tommy Hazuri. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Watching my father build this law firm and practice law, he taught me hard work. There really is no substitute for hard work. That it's not just one individual, you have to rely on your team. The results will come from that. First wash since I bought it. Still can't believe this thing is yours. No, Navy Federal Credit Union gave me such an affordable car loan, the rest was easy. I mean, I can't imagine where I'd be without them. Check the windows. Yeah, good idea. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. You just want to meet your new niece. Here she is. But if slow upload speeds were to freeze your face and you accidentally snub a newborn, 
Nothing is ever good enough for you. Just remember, you're not a bad sister. This is going to be a problem. You just need better internet. AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience with 25 times faster upload speeds than cable. Get AT&T Fiber. Plan starting at $35 a month for a year. Limited availability in select areas. Call 1-877-ONLY-ATT. Fall together with Lowe's to find great values this season. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. Why bother mastering something? Why test a hybrid engine for over six million miles? Why hand tune an audio system? Why include the most advanced active safety system in its class, standard? Because when you want to create an entirely new feeling, the difference between excellence and mastery is all the difference in the world. The Lexus ES. Every curve, every innovation, every feeling, a product of mastery. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. You never call, baby. Daydreaming again? But I love you still. You know I'm driving, right? I do. If you ride, you get it. Geico Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The Morning Show on Channel 4, number one, nine straight years and counting. Every morning, see just how many local stories cover news that impact your family. Watching and tracking the changes in the weather so you can plan your day. Getting you around tie-ups of time saver traffic. Getting you ready for the day ahead. Saving you money and alerting you to scams and rip-offs with Consumer Reports. You just gotta see it. We'll get your day started right. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. When he got on the board, he took that job just as seriously as he took the job of being mayor. That's Vicki Drake, who served on the school board with Tommy Hazuri. Brenda Priestley Jackson is with us, also served on the Duval County School Board. Matt Carlucci is with us, Tom Wills, Jim Piggott as well. Um, you know, each of us had times of, I think, laughter and smile with, smiles with Tommy Hazuri. What was it like to be on the wrong side or to be an opponent of? Uh, Jim, let me bring you in. Covering City Hall, you, you saw a, a lot of uh, his interactions with the, even colleagues, right? I think it was interesting early on as mayor, you would see he would kind of plot things out with his staff on that of how they were going to go after an issue. But then a city council president, and you'd be sitting back watching in the meeting and say if a council member and him were opposed on something, I'm not going to mention names on that, but you would see Tommy would always have that last dig. He'd put a dig in and say something and go, we're not going to do that. We're not going to cover that. I'm sure the, the two colleagues here that were on the council know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like Brenda, uh, you've seen that. You've seen how he interacted when somebody opposed what he was going to say and tried to cut a meeting short. Yeah, he did. And I, I last, because you said last dig, I would say last word. Yeah, he was right. the president. He understood the power. He got the last word and the last say on how our agenda is going to flow at that time. And he was, and he was principled. I mean, he didn't, he didn't engage in any obfuscation, try to hide the issues of where he stood. But uh, he, I think, had a truly natural bipartisan air. But he was unfortunately on the council in an era that we found was becoming increasingly more partisan. And that was somewhat frustrating, I think, for Tommy, particularly when you're in the Democratic Party and it's a minority. Yes. You know, one of the things I, that, uh, the, and Ms. Carlucci, yes, I want to hear from you, but one of the things that Alvin Brown told us last week when we were discussing, he says, you always knew where Tommy Hazuri stood. Matt Carlucci, would you agree with that? Well, you did. I mean, uh, Tommy was like that. And I'll tell you, uh, he always was so disappointed he didn't get his fourth term as mayor. But I got to say, if, if he ever came close to having his fourth term as mayor, it was while he was council president. Um, I can't think of a council president who had such a strong impact on such a hugely difficult, important year under such difficult times in his life. Uh, but he had an uncanny strength uh, driven by his love for Jacksonville that that brought uh, this council through on the right side of so many issues. 
when he would get upset with somebody, uh, including myself or whoever, it was like you couldn't help but after five minutes with his adversaries, y'all were friends again. In, in like five minutes, he 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 was so lovable, and uh, he he uh, he quickly had a way. He must have been a hard adolescent of discipline. He would be like the child that might get into trouble, but five minutes later, the mom and dad are loving on him. <laughs> he just was a lovable guy. But at the same token, he could be deadly serious when it came down to doing the business of Jacksonville. And I, I actually think his fourth term was summed up as, uh, in his council presidency. Tom, or his second term as mayor. Tom, as, we, up as and, we talk through some of the, the big deals, the things that he accomplished, even as mayor, those two big issues we just talked about, those were not necessarily popular with uh, some parts of Jacksonville. He was willing to take on uh, some of the establishment in those cases, right? Heavens no. The, his political instincts were just remarkable. The, the toll issue was actually raised originally by a Channel 4 investigation. The tolls had been raised by the JTA, and the news director of Channel 4 at the time, Mel Martin, said, recovering stories about the tolls being raised, which is easy, people are mad, but the, the news director at the time, Mel Martin, said, why don't we ask the question, why do we have tolls to begin with? He put the investigative reporter, Michael Dillon, on the story. Tolls are the most inefficient way to collect a tax. Imagine for people who are new here, you're stopped crossing the Fuller Warren Bridge and you're basically frisked to put 25 cents in a basket. Okay, and we, we did a, a, quite a bit of reporting on that. Mayor Hazuri saw that the public was beginning to get very angry about the fact that we have tolls. He seized on that and started a campaign to replace tolls with a half cent sales tax. He crusaded for it and it just barely won and so we had the celebration of knocking down the tolls. 1985, Channel 4 did a documentary called The Smell of Money. The title came from Prime Osborne when he was the chairman of CSX. He was asked about the smells in Jacksonville, and he said, I don't mind the smells because they're the smell of money because of what they wow. did for the economy with the paper mills and with the, uh, with the chemical plants. When the documentary aired, Mayor Godbold was mad about that documentary because, again, this was the subject that was never touched. When Hazuri became mayor, he grabbed on it and began to fight for pollution controls on those paper mills and on those chemical plants, and there was a lot of opposition. He took a lot of heat for it, but he eventually prevailed. Jim, when you were at Channel 17, you also covered that story, and, and there's nothing that the news media likes more than a politician, a public official, especially a mayor, who was grabbed onto an issue that the news organization has been investigating, right, Jim? That's right, and in that, and I think uh, Councilman Azuri brought, or excuse me, Councilman Carlucci brought that up, as I remember that news conference when he went out there uh, and was basically taking on the chemical companies and the paper mills in town, and he was he was mad, and he was he knew he was going to get that. I remember all of the opposition to that, the people that were opposed to that, particularly the paper mills because of all the jobs. It cost them here. money. It, it did, it did, and jobs. That was a concern at the time. But you think now, you think, remember how that smelled and you talked about that earlier. It changed this city, it, yeah. it really did. Uh, Hazuri did things that actually changed Jacksonville that we're still seeing yeah. today. Brenda mentioned his sense of humor. I have to tell this story. I've never told this before, but now that both Mayor Hazuri and Mayor Godbold are gone, I can tell this story. It was a huge day in Jacksonville, June 25th, 1987. The landing is having its grand opening. Deborah Giannolis and I are being shuttled back and forth between the TV station and the landing in a police car with the sirens going. Okay, that's how big a day it is here. Mayor Godbold is in the last days of his administration, six days left. He's out there giving the speech of his lifetime, celebrating the opening of the landing. Deborah and I are sitting back there with soon to be mayor, six days away, Tommy Hizuri. Tommy looks at us and says, if this thing flops and closes, I'm hanging Godbold's portrait in the empty lobby. <laughs> oh, I couldn't believe he said that. <laughs> but that, that was just Tommy, always with the quip. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, we're going to take a short break, but I, I want you to hear what uh, Hazuri's alma mater released in a, a statement from Jacksonville University President Tim Cost. In part, it says, Tommy never met a stranger. 
Uh, his authenticity and warm conversation allowed him to connect with people everywhere he went. He was also a standout student on the Jacksonville University campus, serving as our student body president before graduating in 1966. Clearly, uh, his idea of serving uh, goes back a long way. All right, so I want you to stay with us. Uh, we're going to have one final segment in honor of the Honorable Tommy Hazuri next on This Week in Jacksonville. Looking for a hot tub? Look no further than Splash. All hot tubs on sale as low as $89 a month. Truckloads of hot tubs arriving monthly, so come reserve yours today. With zero interest financing, get your backyard vacation ready at Splash. Impossible. Zero Sugar Trabani is here. Zero Sugar Trabani has zero sugar? Zero sugar. The five zero. And it's lactose free. Naturally. And 60 calories? Impossibly delicious. Impossible. Getting back to all of this will take all of us. If you have questions about the vaccines, Florida Blue nurses are standing by for your call. Florida Blue, your local Blue Cross Blue Shield, here for the one place we call home. It's not your fault that a hurricane destroyed your roof or a busted pipe ruined your kitchen. When the insurance company denies your claim or sends you a lowball offer, call the property insurance lawyers at Fair and Farah, and we'll fight to get you paid. This Labor Day and every day, the exclusive KitchenAid appliances you want are within reach. Like this exclusive five-element range. Get up to $500 off now on select appliances. Only at Lowe's. Hey, look at this. It's Kit Kat Thins. They taste like Kit Kats and they are thin. Creamy and crispy and they are thin. You can see why we call them Kit Kat Thins. And remember, what are we not going to mention to Grandma? That Grandpa loves redheads. That Lazy got a lower back tattoo. That you have trust issues. That Mom doesn't really have a headache every Sunday. The 2021 Toyota Highlander. Perfect for the not-so-perfect family. Right now, lease a new 2021 Toyota Highlander LE for just $319 a month for 36 months. Toyota, let's go places. If you could know what's on his mind. If your heart could feel the way her heart feels. But kids don't wear their thoughts on their sleeves. So it's time to give them a voice. Our mission at On Our Sleeves, to provide every child in America with free mental health resources. Developed by trusted pediatric behavioral health experts. Save 35 to 75% on all patio sets during Splash's patio furniture clearance. Dining sets, sitting groups, all patio furniture. Marked down to record low prices. Save up to 75% plus zero interest financing only at Splash. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. Tommy was one of Jacksonville's greatest citizens. When I was his vice president, he always included me into everything and he's one of the reasons why I'm able to take the job. Thanks for joining us this morning as we remember Tom at Hazuri. That was City Council President Sam Newby who just succeeded Hazuri in that role. Uh, Matt Carlucci, Mr. Newby uh, told us on the program last week that he was encouraged by Tommy Hazuri to even uh, try and go after being the city council president. As we kind of wrap up here, we've got about a minute each for kind of final thoughts. I know that uh, you may have been able to speak to Tommy Hazuri uh, in these last couple of weeks. What were the last things that he got to say to you? Well, uh, I had uh, a lot of opportunities to visit with Tommy and we both just shared how much we loved each other our friendship, um, and in Tommy Hissory style, you know, he would ask me, you know, how things were going on the council, and he wanted to know how my campaign was going. I mean, that's just, you know, it's hard to think of personal stories without intertwining politics, but the biggest thing that I would do is we shared this ethnic kind of similarity, and uh, I kissed him on both cheeks 
on uh, one particular day. And then I came back a few days later and I kissed him on both cheeks again. And I said, thank goodness somebody shaved you, Tommy. <laughs> wow. um, it, 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 it was uh, just, he was just so grateful that so many people uh, loved him. And, and, um, and I guess the last thing he said to me that could be audibly heard was, thank you for coming by, buddy. I love you. Yeah. And I'll never forget those words for my whole life. Yeah, thank, thank you for sharing that. And uh, Brenda Priestley-Jackson, last words that you got to share with Tommy Hosuri? I mean, he was a Jacksonville gym. He was a Jacksonville gym. And so he finished his leg of the race. So whether you say the RNC stopping it, continuing the SIC JEA investigation, creating the Social Justice and Community Investment Committee, his passionate position on Lot J, the local option gas tax, or the Safer Together workshops. You tell me someone else in modern times who's had an agenda that densely packed and effective in that time frame, and more importantly, his ability to make certain that our elections in Duval County were not unfairly tampered with during this last round with the election canvassing board and stepping in and offering a position on that. Uh, Jacksonville, Jim. Making a difference right to the end. Uh, Tom and Jim, I want to give you an opportunity for a last word here, last moment. Well, one thing I'd like to say, our hearts go out to Carol and to young Tommy and to the entire Hazuri family over their loss and how much Tommy was loved. And I, I just, I, I wrote this online about being in Walmart when Tommy Hazuri was there. It was like being in Walmart, the one down in Mandarin uh, near 295. It was like being in Walmart with Elvis. I mean, the, the whole store, everybody just wanted to see him and he, he stopped to see every single person that, that wanted to to talk to him, just just an extraordinary man, and we're so privileged to to have known him. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Jim? You know, I talked a little bit about the HRO and Tommy's involvement with that, but the fact, and this was just not that long ago with his aide, Amber Lehman, they hung the pride flag up at City Hall in his window in his office. Not only once they did that twice, controversial at the time, but he did it, he always wanted to make a statement and let his voice be heard. Yeah. That's what I remember, Tommy, just always being out front. Yeah. I appreciate uh, each of you sharing those memories. Uh, I'm probably the one who knew Tommy Hazuri the least, or the least long, I guess. I, I came to town 11 years ago, and the first meeting, again, it was like, uh, he treated me like he'd known me all my life, yeah. right? Uh, and so I, too, uh, have great recollections of Tommy Hazuri, and uh, I, too, to his family this morning, we are grieving with you. Uh, we're so thankful that you shared Tommy Hazuri and uh, all of his efforts over these almost five decades of public service with us. Brenda Priestley-Jackson, Matt Carlucci, thank you so much. City Council members for being You're with welcome. us this morning and longtime friends of Tommy Hazuri. Tom Wills, Jim Piggott, thank you. I know you covered the man, but uh, had relationship with him. Thank you so much for being with us. And if you're with us on the CW17, that's our show for today. If you're watching us on Channel 4, This Week in Jacksonville continues after the break. Wake up with Hardee's. You can have candy for breakfast. Wait, what? New $3 French toast dips. Sweeten up your morning at Hardee's. Tell you no. Feed your happy. You don't need to be a history buff to know the pirates got one thing right. Treasure belongs in a chest. Hormel Black Label Bacon. Make it. Your eyes, beautiful on the outside. But if you have diabetes, there can be some not so pretty stuff going on on the inside. It's true. If you have diabetes, you know high blood sugar is the root of the problem. But that excess sugar can cause the blood vessels to be seriously damaged. And when that happens, this could happen. Vision loss or even blindness. That's right. Diabetic retinopathy is a leading cause of blindness for adults in the U.S. But even though you can't see it, there is something you can do about it. Remember this. Now is the time to get your eyes checked. Eye care is an incredibly important part of your long-term diabetes management. See a path forward with actions and treatments that may help your eyes and protect against vision loss. Just say to yourself, now I see. Then go see an eye care specialist. Visit nowic.com to get the facts about diabetes, your eyes, and what you can do next to take control of your sight. Brought to you by Regeneron. Don't let the insurance companies play around with your future. 
At Farah and Farah, we've been protecting you and your family since 1979. Farah and Farah. The future of downtown, Tuesday at 5 p.m. on News 4 Jax. Wake up with Hardee's. $2 sausage biscuit, $4 breakfast platter. But wait, new $3 French toast dips make the most important meal of the day more fun. Hardee's new $3 French toast dips, the sweet one on the two, three more breakfast menu. Feed your appetite. The Weather Authority alerts faster than ever with Exact Track 4D. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. And welcome back to our extended edition of This Week in Jacksonville. Yesterday, the nation marked 20 years since the terror attacks of September 11, 2001. At Ground Zero in New York, bells tolled as the names of each person lost were read. It's a tradition that was paused last year due to the pandemic. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden, they were on hand for the ceremony, along with two former presidents and first ladies, the Obamas and the Clintons. The Bidens also paid their respects at the other sites of tragedy from that morning in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. While in Shanksville, the president spoke of how the day of the attacks remains etched in our minds. These memorials are really important, but they're also incredibly difficult for the people who are affected by them. Because it brings back the moment you got the phone call brings back that instant you got the news, no matter how many years go by. I spoke with Mike Lennington, retired Lieutenant General in the U.S. Army and now the CEO of Wounded Warrior Project. General Lennington was in the Pentagon on September 11, 2001. He told me that he saw what happened in New York City just like most Americans. He was glued to a TV. Shortly after 9 o'clock, I remember sitting there when the first tower was hit thinking it was a you know, it was a mishap of some type of a plane got misoriented. And then watching the second plane go into the tower, it was one of those V8 moments where you realize, oh my gosh, this is intentional. And, you know, our country's under attack. Of course, we never thought that we were vulnerable at the Pentagon. And it was just a few minutes later when, um, you know, the west side of the building was hit um, with, uh, you know, uh, airline coming through the side of the building and just the chaos the, the uh, carnage, the destruction was evident to all of us in the Pentagon. Uh, I was safe, I was on the north side. The Pentagon's very large, 34 acres in, in just size alone, five concentric circles. I was on the D-ring watching TV. Of course, we were all evacuated and uh, all of us saw the carnage as the, the wounded uh, were evacuated into the center of the courtyard because we thought a second plane was coming. So we were relatively, uh, sheltering in place and then following the um, instructions of the first responders that were quickly there um, recovering uh, those that were more critically wounded. It was a it was a horrible day. I'll never forget it. And uh, I think about it, especially today as we approach the 20th anniversary of 9-11. There's some mixed emotions about what was accomplished over these 20 years in response to what happened at 9-11. How do you address that for your, your colleagues, your former comrades? There is a lot of mixed emotions, especially as we watch what's going on in Afghanistan. Certainly um, for anyone that served in Afghanistan over the last 20 years, I mean, their service mattered. And that's the first thing I'll say. Uh, not only did we uh, protect our country from future attacks, from what was an Al-Qaeda safe haven, um, but we also provided opportunities for the vulnerable, for Afghan people, women and children in particular, uh, women and girls in particular that would have never had those opportunities. And, you know, young people serve for a variety of reasons. It's certainly for the country and for protecting the freedoms we all enjoy as Americans, but they also serve for each other. And being there for each other 20 years in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in, you know, 170 other countries around the world where we have 200,000 troops deployed today, despite not having a lot of troops in Afghanistan, that's what matters. And I firmly believe that the, the book on Afghanistan, you know, one chapter may be closing in the book, but the full book on the future of Afghanistan is not written yet. And I believe that when you, when you put, especially a country with so many young people, you know, I saw a statistic that said 70% of the population is under the age of 25. They've only known freedom and opportunity. Those freedoms and opportunities that were, were guaranteed by the service of certainly many of our alumni at Wounded Warrior Project and for the seven 
thousand that were killed in Iraq and Afghanistan, the Gold Star families, you never know when those seeds will germinate again and provide the same opportunities for future generations of Afghans. So for me, it's a time to uh, commemorate and honor the service and sacrifice of those that were lost on 9-11, um, honor the resilience of our nation in responding to that attack and holding those accountable shortly thereafter. And it's a time to reflect on the service and sacrifice of all of our men and women in uniform and first responders and others that, that you know, follow a life of service and, and just remind them that we are better together than we all apart. And the unity that came on the 12th of September the, the unity as a, as a nation is something I think we should all commit to in the future. Wounded Warrior Project, which you lead at this point in your, your career in life, has a specific mission that surrounds what happened at 9-11 and beyond. Just briefly tell about that. And, and maybe somebody out there says, boy, I need to get connected either to help with the mission being accomplished or they're in need. And that's a great question and a great point. We were born out of 9-11 as an organization. A group of volunteers in Roanoke, Virginia, saw the wounded coming back from the battlefields in, in Iraq and Afghanistan and wanted to make a difference at the hospitals where they were being evacuated to. You know, you get you come off the battlefield with a serious injury, gunshot wound, explosion, you know, amputation, burn. First thing they do, the first thing the medics do is cut your clothes off, get you on an evacuation helicopter, and get you back to the hospital as quick as possible. And that's at Longstool Regional Medical Center and then on to Walter Reed or Brook Army Medical Center. And then your family follows very closely thereafter to be there with you bedside. So Many of these veterans came off the battlefield with nothing but, but the, the hospital garment they were wearing. So these volunteers got together and said, let's provide some comfort items, you know, shorts, shirts, um, you know, playing cards, uh, the old calling cards when you didn't have cell phones, you know, Walkman, the old Walkman that you and I probably remember with a CD you'd put in there and you'd listen to music. And then for the families, it was blankets, it was overnight essentials, toiletries, things they needed. And from there, we've really grown into an organization that provides dozens of programs and services that helps meet the evolving needs of those we serve and those, those evolving needs in the areas of physical health and healing, uh, mental health and counseling, you know, financial um, counseling, resilience, benefits counseling, jobs programs, and then in-home care for those most seriously wounded. And we don't do it alone. We do it with the support of the American people. And if there's one thing I want to get out of the call today, it's that for all of the all of those that have served in uniform, you are not alone. Your service mattered. And if you need help, please reach out for help, because I guarantee if you show the strength and the moral courage to reach out for help, healing mind, body or spirit, others will follow your lead. And that's really what this is all about is, you know, reducing any barriers to care and getting folks the benefit and the and the uh, health care that they've earned through their honorable service. Thank you to General Lennington. Next, my conversation earlier this week with two local leaders. We're going to hear their recollections on 9-11 and what they're doing now to support veterans. The Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinics at Centerstone Jacksonville and the Fire Watch, both on display next on This Week in Jacksonville. Watching my father build this law firm and practice law, he taught me hard work. There really is no substitute for hard work. That it's not just one individual, you have to rely on your team. The results will come from that. First law since I bought it. Still can't believe this thing is yours. No, Navy Federal Credit Union gave me such an affordable car loan, the rest was easy. I mean, I can't imagine where I'd be without them. Check the windows. Yeah, good idea. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. You just want to meet your new niece. Here she is. But if slow upload speeds were to freeze your face and you accidentally snub a newborn... Nothing is ever good enough for you. Just remember, you're not a bad sister. This is going to be a problem. You just need better internet. AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience with 25 times faster upload speeds than cable. Get AT&T Fiber. Plan starting at $35 a month for a year. Limited availability in select areas. Call 1-877-ONLY-ATT.
fall together with Lowe's to find great values this season. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. Why bother mastering something? Why test a hybrid engine for over six million miles? Why hand tune an audio system? Why include the most advanced active safety system in its class, standard? Because when you want to create an entirely new feeling, the difference between excellence and mastery is all the difference in the world. The Lexus ES. Every curve, every innovation, every feeling, a product of mastery. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. You never call, baby. Daydreaming again? But I love you still. You know I'm driving, right? I do. If you ride, you get it. Geico Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The Morning Show on Channel 4, number one, nine straight years and counting. Every morning, see just how many local stories cover news that impact your family. Watching and tracking the changes in the weather so you can plan your day. Getting you around tie-ups of time saver traffic. Getting you ready for the day ahead. Saving you money and alerting you to scams and ripoffs with Consumer Reports. You just gotta see it. We'll get your day started right. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. In this segment, we're joined by two veterans and two people leading veteran service organizations. General Mike Fleming. Uh, Michael Fleming is the outreach director for the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Center Stone, Jacksonville. And Nick Howitt, executive director of the Fireworks. So let's start with your personal experience. Uh, General Fleming, where were you? What were you doing? What do you remember about September 11, 2001? And thank you for letting me be on here. Uh, I was uh, just become the chief of staff for the Florida Army National Guard uh, about eight days earlier. And uh, I was having a meeting and someone knocked on my door and said I needed to come out and, uh, and see what was happening on television. So I saw the second plane go into the towers. And then we all didn't know what was happening. But what led to, in my case, from the Florida National Guard doing the missions in the airport, by the Homeland Security missions, and then... Uh, during my time until 2010, uh, sending more than 10,000 soldiers to overseas deployments. So it just changed the dynamics of, of our particular military organization, the Florida National Guard, but it it just changed everything for our lives. Yeah, it, it changed changed everything for uh, all of us. Nick Howland, I know you had served in the Navy uh, 95 through 99, so you're out of the service. What, are you, what were you experiencing on 9-11 20 years ago? Yeah, first, thanks for having me, Kent. Really appreciate you highlighting this issue. And yeah, I had just left the Navy. I was in business school at the time in Chicago. And uh, I had heard about the first tower. I was driving on Lakeshore Drive right there along the lake uh, when the second tower fell. And I remember looking up at the John Hancock building and think, thinking the world has changed. We're under attack. So between Iraq and Afghanistan over these 20 years, more than 7,000 American military lives lost following 9-11, tens of thousands wounded in action. How does the recent withdrawal from Afghanistan intensify any of the emotions connected to a veteran service? And, and General Fleming, I'll start with you. And then how does your organization try and meet some needs there for our veterans? And there were a number of emotions that came out of the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Those of us old enough to remember the uh, as we left Vietnam, uh, there were challenges because some of the members that served in both Vietnam and now in Afghanistan may have felt like their sacrifice wasn't worth it. What what happened if someone lost somebody there? And I think all those emotions are swirling around, not just for Afghanistan veterans, really all veterans, because no one likes to see what they saw on television, particularly losing Marines and soldiers. And so we're very fortunate. We have the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic here at Centerstone, and we provide outpatient mental health care for uh, post 9-11 veterans and military families. And one of the big aspects of what we do is we allow the veteran to find his or her family because there are so many uh, family members, but also friends and associates that are affected by the recent events in Afghanistan yeah. because they know what it meant to their service member. Yeah, and Nick, how do you and how does the Firewatch answer a warrior or a family member who is disappointed, who is uh, maybe feeling some of those frustrations and feeling betrayed, any of those things following the U.S. withdrawal? 
Yeah, that's a great question because emotions are raw right now. And we're hearing lots of veterans, whether Afghanistan, Iraq, um, any post 9-11 veteran, really any veteran for that matter, asking, what's the point? Did I make a difference? And the way we've been answering is, yes, you made a difference. And on your watch, you kept people safe and you protected our national security. So you made a difference. And that's what we're saying to people. But we're also directing people to the veteran crisis line if they need help. And for those who just want to talk to veterans, we're sending them to a new resource that has popped up that's pretty remarkable called Vets for Warriors, um, where they have veterans standing by 24 seven just to talk with veterans who need someone to talk to. Yeah, it's needed, I think is your, your point there. General Fleming, do you have people who served under your command that you, you reach out to or hear from when big events like the withdrawal take place? Or are there some people that you intentionally reach out to because of that? Uh, absolutely, Kent. It was, uh, I had the opportunity to write a, a guest uh, letter to the editor. And my real emphasis was each of us individually can do some things, whatever politically you wanna do. But the one thing we all can do is reach out to veterans. Now is not a time for someone to stay on the sidelines when veterans need you. And if we think about the uh, Vietnam withdrawal and the way our Vietnam veterans were treated, they were ignored, spit on, all kinds of different challenges. And if we don't want that to happen to today's warriors, Vietnam veteran warriors don't want that to happen. Right. So it's time to be off the sidelines and help our veterans. Yeah, Nick Howland, two phrases come to mind for me when we're talking about 9-11 and, and marking 20 years. Never forget, and you're not alone. Those sentiments, uh, is it always for the warriors themselves who need to hear that, who need care? It seems like spouses and other family members could have a tough time as well. Warriors, spouses, and their families, they all need, we all need to put our arms around all of them right now at this you know, particularly vulnerable time. And when you say you are not alone, in Northeast Florida, warriors and veterans are not alone. In fact, um, under the general's leadership, who's the chair of the Firewatch, we launched a program called the Watchstander Program in Northeast Florida, which trains community members to learn the warning signs of veterans in crisis and how to get them help. We have over 1,300 members of the community who signed up. So you are certainly not alone if you're a veteran. There are people out there who care for you and there's resources available to you. Veterans, spouses, and family members. Yeah, I'm, I'm honored to be one of those watchstanders because of your influence and your ability to, to create community and say, you, you can be civilian. You don't have to be a veteran to help veterans through what could be a tough time. General Mike Fleming, Nick Howland, appreciate you both very much. And we want to make sure that you know how to access care for yourself or for a friend or family member. And here are just some of the ways. There's the Veterans Crisis Line. The number's on your screen there, 1-800-273-8255, press 1. Or uh, the VA chat online at the veteranscrisisline.net. That's a way to get some help there. Uh, the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Centerstone, Jacksonville. The phone number, 904-431-3500. And then you can go online to centerstone.org and drill down and find uh, the local Jacksonville office as well. And then finally, the Firewatch. Become a watchstander. That's at thefirewatch.org slash watch dash standers. So more of the local connections to 9-11, including a Gold Star spouse and New York City firefighters. Those stories when we come back on This Week in Jackson. Looking for a hot tub? Look no further than Splash. All hot tubs on sale as low as $89 a month. Truckloads of hot tubs arriving monthly, so come reserve yours today. With zero interest financing, get your backyard vacation ready at Splash. Impossible. Zero Sugar Trabani is here. Zero Sugar Trabani has zero sugar? Zero sugar. Define zero. And it's lactose free. Naturally. And 60 calories? Impossibly delicious. Impossible. Getting back to all of this will take all of us. If you have questions about the vaccines, Florida Blue nurses are standing by for your call. Florida Blue, your local Blue Cross Blue Shield, here for the one place we call home. It's not your fault that a hurricane destroyed your roof or a busted pipe ruined your kitchen. When the insurance company denies your claim or sends you a lowball offer, 
Call the property insurance lawyers at Farrah and Farrah, and we'll fight to get you paid. This Labor Day and every day, the exclusive KitchenAid appliances you want are within reach. Like this exclusive five-element range. Get up to $500 off now on select appliances. Only at Lowe's. Hey, look at this. It's Kit Kat Thins. They taste like Kit Kats and they are thin. Creamy and crispy and they are thin. You can see why we call them Kit Kat Thins. And remember, what are we not going to mention to Grandma? That Grandpa loves redheads? That Lizzie got a lower back tattoo? That you have trust issues? That Mom doesn't really have a headache every Sunday? The 2021 Toyota Highlander. Perfect for the not-so-perfect family. Right now, lease a new 2021 Toyota Highlander LE for just $319 a month for 36 months. Toyota, let's go places. If you could know what's on his mind. If your heart could feel the way her heart feels. But kids don't wear their thoughts on their sleeves. So it's time to give them a voice. Our mission at On Our Sleeves? To provide every child in America with free mental health resources. Developed by trusted pediatric behavioral health experts. Save 35 to 75% on all patio sets during Splash's patio furniture clearance. Dining set, sitting groups, all patio furniture, marked down to record low prices. Save up to 75% plus zero interest financing only at Splash. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. And here we are on September 12th. September 11th is very personal to a Middleburg woman that we introduced you to earlier this week. Supply Sergeant Maggie Beckerman served in the U.S. Army until 2011. New Year's Eve 2010, while on deployment in Afghanistan, her battalion commander let her know Maggie's husband had been killed in action. Eventually, she was able to turn her grief into relief for other warriors. It was hard because my very last ramp ceremony was actually my husband's and I was a part of it in a different way. I was actually following his, following his casket from behind. And you look at, I remember looking at sergeants and those that I was in the same unit with and there was one individual that was actually one of my drill sergeants in basic training years ago and we just made eye contact and it was very profound to feel a sense of I'm sorry just from a look and it was something that you again you can never explain an experience other than through vivid words and very colorful explanations but unless you go through it you really don't know you only have an opinion and even then, you still have an opinion because everyone's perception is different. Where does that take you to where we are now and maybe even back to what's on your shirt and what's on the cup? And what's up? <laughs> how, how does canine line connect to that awful experience you had there with the end of service and how you were dealing with stuff? So canine line is an organization I found out about when I was in a meeting for the American Legion Riders. I called them after that meeting and the um, founder said, this is why, you're the reason why we started this. And I started working with them in 2017. I graduated in 2020. A lot of it was myself not being ready to graduate. And they said, Maggie, you're ready. Are you gonna pull the plug? And so finally, um, they also said, we don't want you to leave. Would you like to work with us and be a part of our team? And now, um, being the president of this organization, there's not just pride, but there's that ability to continue serving, to continue with that camaraderie with other people that have that same mindset. And when I'm having an off day or an off week, um, if something occurs and I just need a breath, there's no judgment. There's nothing but support. Um, my family, they have tried from day one and not just tried, succeeded. 
to show that support. So other than just having my family, I have another family through Canine Line. Sergeant Beckerman started training with Canine Line in 2017, then became the president of the organization, as you heard. And uh, she was just reminding me that uh, this is for veterans of any era, regardless of where you served, contractors who served the United States overseas, and for Gold Star families, and Canine Line does that uh, at no cost. Also recognized as heroes, the men and women who rushed into action as soon as the terrorist attacks happened 20 years ago. I spoke with, spoke with four New York City firefighters who now live in St. Augustine, and there are some mixed emotions as the war ended in Afghanistan as, and as they remember the losses on that day in Manhattan. Send every available ambulance, everything you got to the World Trade Center now. They were there 20 years ago, the terror attack on New York City. I can't get it out of my head how, how fast 20 years has gone. These four men live in St. John's County now. <laughs> but on 9-11, they were serving in the fire department of New York. Each responded from different firehouses, different jobs, different schedules, but each responded like a New York City firefighter. They immediately ran toward the disaster where eventually 343 firefighters would die. Oh, God bless all those guys that were lost. John Westfield was first of these four on scene, on duty and dispatched before United Flight 175 arrived and delivered another devastating blow to the Twin Towers. I watched those buildings go up as a kid, and I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd watch them go out in flatbed trucks. Eddie Zielman, Bob Aponte, Jerry Durkin, they were all formerly off duty when the planes hit. They all raced to respond, and none could imagine how many in their brotherhood they would lose. All five... Burroughs have a rescue company. All five rescue companies were sent to World Trade Center. All five companies lost every member from each of those companies. Definitely someone hit the second tower. Approximately two-thirds of the way up, you got visible fire showing out there. Transmit a fifth alarm for to uh, Tower 2. Something happened that hadn't in more than 30 years. A call to each firefighter in New York City. Well, citywide recalls when they recall all firefighters from, that are off duty back on... Uh, uh, coming, which never happens. Which, which never happens. And myself and two of my firefighters, we were instructed to report to Shea Stadium. Aponte responded from that staging area when he was sent to the pile, the pile of debris following the towers collapsing. Durkin was across the river in New Jersey and says he will never forget what he saw on a ferry ride to Manhattan. So we got about halfway, almost parallel with the Staten Island Ferry. And guess what? The North Tower goes. And we were like, oh, my God. Durkin is a nurse and arrived to treat people for injuries. His young sister-in-law, though, he wouldn't be able to treat. She was taken by the terrorist attack. And the guy goes to me, yeah, my brother's here somewhere. And I'm like, oh, what company is he with? No, he's here. He's below us. And I'm like, yeah, I think my sister-in-law is here too. Each of these men suffered loss in the attack. It seems each is unable, and it really sounds like unwilling to let a day pass without remembering the horror and the heroes and those left behind. It's not easy to talk about it. It's not. Do you imagine the courage it took for those guys to know where they had to go to and just to get to those top floors? And some of them got to those top floors. You know what I mean? That's the calling that makes these people. You go in. People run out, you run in. 9-11, people are running out, you're running in. That's just, that's what you do. You're a soldier. You serve and protect. And uh, those four men who served and protect still getting the word out. Two of those men were uh, featured speakers at 9-11 Remembrances yesterday. Thanks for being with us today. Next time we're together, Jacksonville City Council should have a decision this week on the Jaguars development proposal for the shipyards. This week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and the CW 17. You can also find episodes online at news4jax.com. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jacks, Northeast Florida and South Georgia's number one source for local news.